Well, howdy! <laughs> I sure am glad to bump into y'all. Uh, I thought I was lost down here all by myself. These old mine train tracks run all through here like spaghetti. Ain't no way to be remembering where all the tracks go. Uh, that's why we done made ourselves a system using none other than the books of the good book. I'm talking about the Bible. Now, uh, my memory ain't what it used to be, so I'm gonna uh, need your help to get us out of here. Every time these old tracks cross, we stuck ourselves a sign with the name of two books of the Bible on it. One will be from the Old Testament, and the other will be from the New Testament. To help us get out of this old mine, make sure to lean toward the sign with the Old Testament book. But if y'all lean toward the sign with the New Testament book, this old train car will just end up even deeper in this mine. Jeepers, no! I'll be keeping a handle on these old rusty brakes so we don't go flying off the tracks. Hi-ho, let's go. Oh, here's our first sign. Uh, which of these books is in the Old Testament? Psalms or Mark? Remember, raise your hands and lean towards the sign with the Old Testament book so we can get this old mine car headed in the right direction. Well, hot diggity, you're smarter than a one-eyed owl. That's right. Psalms is in the Old Testament. Good work. We might be getting out of this mine today. Oh, I think we've got another sign coming up. Which of these books is in the Old Testament? Jude or Joshua? Well, wrap me in dough and call me a pie. You're right. Joshua is in the Old Testament. Well done. Now, hang on tight. Here comes the next sign. Which of these books is in the Old Testament? Acts or Ruth? Well, paint me yellow and call me Stinky Cheese. That's right. Ruth is in the Old Testament. Good job. Oh, I think I see our next sign up ahead. Which of these books is in the Old Testament? Jonah or John? Well, cover me in butter and call me a corn cob. <laughs> You're right. Jonah is in the Old Testament. Way to go. I think we're getting close to getting out of here. Here comes the next sign. Which of these books is in the Old Testament? Ecclesiastes or Ephesians? Well, paint me red and call me a tomato! You're right! Ecclesiastes is in the Old Testament. I think we've just got this one last turn to make, and we'll be out of here. Which of these books is in the Old Testament? Job or James? You're rootin' tootin' right! Job is in the Old Testament! Slather me in barbecue sauce and serve me up! Cause we're done! You guys did it! You remembered your books of the Bible and got us out of that old mine! Much obliged for your assistance. Now, if y'all will excuse me, all this talk of stinky cheese, one-eyed owls, and corn has got me remembering that I ain't eaten in five days, and... <laughs> If my nose don't be deceiving me, somebody's cooking up some cactus and coyote stew right now.
Son of God, the Son of God, yeah!
Hello, boys and girls. I am Sister Jenkins, and I welcome you to yet another exciting lesson coming from the book, There is Power in the Blood. Now, our topic for today is a willing partner. But before we get started, let's say a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for the children who have tuned in to listen to today's lesson. I pray you open up their ears, their minds, and their hearts to receive a word directly from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, boys and girls, let's go over the memory verse from last week. And our memory verse comes from the book of Genesis chapter 22, verse 12. And it reads, you have not withheld even your beloved son from me. Now, let's say that again. You have not withheld even your beloved son from me. Now, who's speaking here? None other than God Almighty himself. And who is he talking to? He's talking to Abraham, a man of great faith. In fact, in the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 6, it says, And Abraham believed, obeyed, trusted God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, who is Abraham's beloved son? That would be Isaac. Now, God promised Abraham and Sarah, his wife, that from that son, many descendants would come and bless the whole world. Even though Abraham and Sarah was old, they still trusted and believed in God to bring that promise to pass. So let's get into our lesson, a willing partner. Now, if you can remember from our previous lessons, uh, we talked about a covenant. And we said a covenant was a serious agreement between two or more parties. So we also learned that God made a blood covenant with Abraham. And that agreement was that he would make Abraham's descendants as many as the grains of sand on the beach and the stars in the sky. Now, boys and girls, uh, can you imagine how many uh, itsy bitsy pieces of sand that it would take to cover an entire beach and how many stars it would take to brighten up the, the night skies? Uh, it would be a whole heaping lot. In fact, we wouldn't even have enough numbers in our numbering system to count all of that. <clears throat> But nevertheless, that's exactly what God had promised Abraham. And Abraham trusted God to keep his word. Now also, um, boys and girls, you've heard the story how God tested Abraham. Uh, he wanted him to sacrifice his beloved son Isaac on the altar uh, as a burnt uh, sacrifice to him. And, of course, uh, Abraham and Sarah, for that matter, must have felt some type of way because they were old. But they knew that since God said it, he couldn't lie, and he would have to bring it to pass some way, somehow. So let's imagine. Uh, picture this old man Abraham taking his son Isaac up to the mountain to be sacrificed and picking up sticks and and, and, and twigs and branches along the way for the fire. And Isaac, a, a young teenager, uh, just clueless to what's going on. And then they finally reaching that place where the sacrifice was to be made. And the son asking him, Pops, we have the twigs, we have the fire, we have the, the branches. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And old man Abraham telling him, God will provide. Now let's picture uh, uh, old man Abraham slowly tying his son's arms to the altar, slowly tying, tying his legs to the altar, still meditating on the fact that God will provide. But boys and girls, just think, Isaac was young, he was strong, but and old man Abraham was weak. And Isaac could have easily refused to be sacrificed. He could have knocked his daddy in the head, ran off in the woods somewhere, but he peacefully allowed 
and submitted himself to his father to be tied up on the altar, knowing that death was about to come. But because Abraham was a man of great faith, trusting and believing in God and obeying God, being faithful and committed to him, you better believe that Abraham raised his son Isaac the same way, being faithful, obedient, and trustful in God. And that's why Isaac was able to peacefully submit to the old man tying him up on the altar to be sacrificed. Now, boys and girls, you know how the story ends. God did provide right at the exact time when Abraham was about to sacrifice his son Isaac. God showed him the ram in the bush to use as a sacrifice instead. Therefore, Abraham had passed the test. He had proved his faith and his trust in God. Didn't he do it? Now, boys and girls, do you have faith as strong as Abraham? Are you committed to following and trusting God even to death like Isaac was about to do, quietly submitting himself to that altar? So, boys and girls, if you want to be part of God's family and if God is speaking to your heart right now, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. And he died on the cross for my sins. And he rose on the third day with all power. I received Jesus as my personal Savior to live in me and through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, boys and girls, if you said that prayer with me, welcome to the family. The heavenly hosts are rejoicing. We are rejoicing because you just made the most important decision in your life, and that was to, to become part of God's family. And we thank God for you. Well, boys and girls, this concludes our lesson for today. We thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you next week. And may God bless you richly. Bye-bye.